while he was waiting for his go in the pole vault. These athletes will take part in uh, heat number two we're looking at, so getting a look at everyone before they shape up on that start line. There's uh, Torres of Gibraltar. I love giving every nation a shout out when we see some of those with smaller contingents. Doesn't necessarily mean that they uh, aren't always contenders to advance, of course. Uh, Luxembourg have uh, two very strong athletes, Van der Weyken, the female sprinter, and Charles Grethen, who's been very consistent on the uh, European circuit this year as a middle distance runner in the 1500. Yes, Gretchen didn't unfortunately get through to the final of the 1500 metres, but also a shout out for the Cyprus as well. Decent number of throwers, some of them doing well at the Commonwealth Games two weeks ago, others in contention here. So. So this will be heat number one, and on the inside we'll have Robin Erewa. So I'm sure he'll get the biggest shout from the crowd. This is Matthias Hurva Johansson, Norway not famed as one of the biggest sprinting nations. But there's a sensational generation in any case, and Norway hosting the European Team Championships first league a few years ago, the Inga Britsons on home soil, and I suppose that's the kind of event where you get an indication of uh, how a nation's doing across all events, the chance to field a competitor in every discipline, and for them to get their moment in the spotlight, even if it isn't, isn't your nation's best event. Tamir Burnett of the Netherlands will go in lane eight on the outside. Lifetime best of 20.34, which is actually the fastest in the field, 20.47 this year. Going past Herve Johansson, then Lukas Zok of Poland, Polish champion indoors and out. This is Jan Jirka, national record holder, Marcus Lawler, not too far away from uh, Paul Hessian's uh, 200 record. He's a tenth off it. 2030 it is, so Hessian maybe he'll be ha hanging on to that record for a little bit longer. Then we went through Trevitsas of Greece, Van der Bemden of Belgium, and there is Robin Erewa. Erewa is the German champion indoors and out eight times, mostly over 200 metres. On your marks. So this is his event, whereas, as I say, Robin van der Bemden often seen him over 400. Well, it's really not just the Borle brothers who are strong for Belgium. They've also got Sakur, Doom, Vatrin, who we saw in the 400 hurdles, Iguasel, van der Bemden. So their legacy is pretty much secure. As the Borle's, I think uh, Kevin and Jonathan are about 34 years of age. Anyway, Edera, van der Bemden, Trevitas, Lola. Jürka, Zock, Johansson and Burnett. First heat of the men's 200. <laughs> Remind you, top three going through to the semis and then three time qualifiers. The sunlight really shining down on these athletes through the roof here in Munich. Van der Bemden going really strongly in the white of Belgium, but look at Burnett coming through like a train in the second half of the race. 20.49, so a time that few athletes in this field could really live with, and into a minus one wind. Also really impressive, that from Burnett, throwing the gauntlet down to the rest of the competitors. Of course, uh, in the sprint events, some athletes top 12 going through to the semi-finals directly. Lukas Zok and Jan Gierka getting the second and third auto cue spots. Well, I saw Tyler Burnett in action at a meeting uh, a month or so ago in Bern, which I was commentating on. I was very impressed with him. He really looked the part over 200 metres, set a personal best on that occasion with a large contingent of Dutch athletes having made that trip to that Swiss meeting. And he's come through. He's really starting to look like a very accomplished athlete. Hasn't really yet broken through 
to the very, very top level of European or indeed world athletics. But I think it's only just a matter of time. And this was a nice run indeed from Burnett in the outside lane. So around the bend, had no idea when it, where everybody else was, was running blind and then came off the bend with a nice handsome lead. Just kept on powering his way through the line. Everybody else battling for the other automatic qualifying spots. Was able finally, probably about five metres from the line, just to glance over his left shoulder and see where everybody else was. Yeah, the Dutch looking for a real world class 100 and 200 runner on the men's side, particularly obviously Daphne Schnippers uh, has been strong for a number of years. Chirandi Martina, don't forget, he won the 100 title in Amsterdam 2016 and 200 in Helsinki in 2012. Chirandi's still sprinting at uh, club and regional level, still involved in the sport at 40 odd years of age. It was almost making the uh, Dutch team, I think, for the Olympics. They were looking for a th fourth man, but they, had, they went with a somewhat younger, younger sprinter, give somebody experience. But Burnett, very useful, can even turn his hand to 400 meter running if needed. So confirmed time coming up as uh, 2048, three tenths ahead of Lukas Jock. And then Jurko getting that third spot in 2084. So a bit surprised that Van der Benden is only as high as fifth. 2090 his time. In heat number two, we'll see the likes of uh, the Italian Essioso Di Salu. So another fast athlete seated on the outside with a best of 28.13. And Jan Volko, who was part of the 100 final, will go in the third heat. Just see a replay there once again of Burnett striding his way down the home straight. A little bit of a surprise that the times were so modest behind Burnett. Just getting inside 21 seconds. These are good sprinting conditions. We've commented in the past, of, of course, with the 100 metres and the hurdles last night, that this isn't the fastest of tracks. But at the same time, it will only make a tenth of a second's difference to the top men in Europe. See there the battle for the second, third, fourth and fifth places going on behind Burnett. Just a bit of discussion. We know there's a large contingent of Dutch journalists here. I'm sure they'll be wanting to have a word with him. But he has got the semi-finals tonight, so he won't be staying too long in what we call the mix zone, where athletes do speak to the journalists. You start with the TV first and then go on to the written media. This is the call room for the third heat. The men in the second heat have already made their way onto the track. Still just trying to keep cool. When you watch the championships, you typically see inside the stadium, but the infrastructure particularly needed for a multi-sport event is absolutely extraordinary. I couldn't believe the number of production offices needed for all of the different sports and all of the different streams as well, and, and so much having to be put on. And you have hospitality facilities, medical areas. There's so much that needs to be worked on. And Years of planning, in fact. Indeed, there is. And you've also found where the food and the freebies is. That's going to rankle with me for a little while. But now we're going to concentrate on the action on the track, which is the second heat in this, the first round of the men's 200 metres. Well, Alex mentioned him a little bit earlier. We've got Jan Volko in here as well. Essa Dasalu. This is one of the Finns trying to keep cool. Desalu on the outside. Purola wears the cap because he sees it as lucky. He ran fast in training wearing it, and even actually, I don't think it, it does keep him cool. It's a bit of a good luck charm. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see whether he's right as this uh, heat unfolds. man we're really keeping an eye out for is the man on the outside we've just seen the first heat run from lane one from lane eight 
Isiola Desayalu. Ran the third leg on the 4x100 team that won Olympic gold last summer in Tokyo. So this is a man with an Olympic gold medal in his collection at home. Gerald Torres of Gibraltar. Tazana Kamanga de Ubach, the Danish record holder. Czech Republic's Eduard Kubelik. Lithuania's Gedminas Truskaskus. And then Samuel Perla. Finnish record holder at 200 metres with 20.45. Many medals in age group championships, both at the European under 18 and under 20 level. Now 22 years of age. As we scan inwards, William Rees of Switzerland and Tamas Mate are in the end side of the fin. So Parola in lane three and Desalu. Out on the outside in lane eight, the man to keep an eye on. Don't discount as well Kamanga Deerbach of Denmark to improve the Danish record this year to 2048. Well, De Salu took a long time to get into the set position, but now he's really starting to motor. Kamanga, Deerback also doing well at the moment. Parola start, struggling a little bit. Well, the Dane going backwards, but it's De Salu, and also on the inside, looks like Mate, ah, Reese, I should say, of Switzerland, who's doing well, but no doubt at all about the winner. And Reese followed him home. That's a bit of a surprise. 20.46, a good run for De Salu. Season's best from Rees, not that far away from his personal best either. Traskaukas in third. So Traskaukas gets a cue next to him. And Parola. Well, a bit of a surprise, he wasn't really showing. He looked as though he was struggling down the bend. <laughs> Kamanga, Deerback, also did well in the opening half of the race around the bend and then started to go backwards as others attacked down the home straight. Etiota to Salo, always great to watch, part of that uh, Olympic Games winning relay team with Filippo Torto Master. Marcel Jacobs and Lorenzo Pata. And nice on the outside. No idea what's going on in his inside, of course, similar to Burnett, but didn't matter. Sailed through. Don't really need the photo finish there. Fairly obvious who the three men to go through are. Led home by De Salo of Italy. And even though De Salo hasn't been seeded into the semi-finals, I have a feeling he's going to be a very strong contender for a place in the final. And, of course, Italy. Well, they are the Olympic gold medalists. We'll obviously be fronting up a very strong 4 by 100 metres relay team. Well, Parola, hard to work it out, but I think he's a bit disappointed with that. Frankly, he should be. No doubt at all who's happy. The Italian contingent. The Italians have brought quite a lot of people here and they're supporting their athletes all the way through this morning session. Just a touch on Parola, Samueli Samuelson in the 100 metres was similarly disappointing for Finland given that he'd actually set a a Finnish national record and broken a, a 21 year long standing mark fairly recently. But the Finns will come together in the relay. I seem to recall they actually set a national record in the 4x1 at the last European Championships in Berlin. So uh, attention 
could well turn to that, although Purola, based on his time, still has an opportunity to make it through to those semi-finals, which I believe are coming up later. <laughs> That's this evening. Well, we've got Finnish broadcasters not that far away from us. Maybe at the break we'll have a quick word with them and see if there's any prevailing issues in the team. Maybe a few people just recovering from COVID that we don't know about, which, of course, is one of the uh, things that we all consider these days when somebody's not running quite to form. Yeah, Toppy at Eiton and the Finnish uh, steeplechaser was a, a big hope for them, but had a, a stomach bug at the World Championships. The big success, though, was uh, Vilma Murto in the pole vault last night with a championship record performance and uh, Finnish national best as well. I think that was even the first Finnish gold, not just in the athletics, but across all the nine sports being contested here at these multi-sport European championships. Yeah, becoming the uh, uh, fifth Finnish woman to uh, win gold at the European athletics championships specifically and 34th overall. So interesting that it's uh, been predominantly been uh, male success in recent years. People often think of Tina Lilak as one of the great Finnish javelin throwers. The last uh, Finnish person to win gold these championships was Antti Ruskinen in the javelin in 2014 in Zurich. Yes, neither of the two great women javelin throwers from Finland ever won a European title, neither Lilak nor uh, Michaela Ingeborg, who was here as a coach this morning, coaching the Finnish female javelin throwers. It was Sara Essaye, the race walker, who got the last Finnish female gold medal before Murto, wasn't it? Back in 1994. That's right, yeah. And there was a terrific uh, performance from uh, Juha Keskisalo to win in Gothenburg in 2006, one of the great steeplechase races that I've ever seen. Let's focus now on this next heat of the men's 200s. Quite surprised that more athletes haven't got the shades out. Looking cool there, that's uh, Simon Hansen of Denmark. Set a 4x1 national record in Tokyo, 2049 at best. Again, the fastest athlete will be on the outside, certainly going by PB, that's uh, Jan Volko. So, said he was in the 100 final. He was fourth there. Known as a bit of a 60-meter specialist, won the European indoor title in 2019, the Slovakian. Here he is, in fact, a three-time European indoor medalist. So certainly I'll have hopes of progressing through this semi-final. If not, then making it through to two finals. Hola of Czech Republic, Hansen, Denmark. Another strong Italian, this is Petto Rossi. 0.4 seconds improvement this year, the Italian 200 meter champion. And that's a pretty difficult title to win. With the likes of uh, De Salu, Infantino in recent years. Tortu and Pata and Jacobs all stronger over 100. So Rodriguez of Spain, the others, the Crota of Poland, and then Felix Svensson. So he's someone that's won the Swedish title in the past, and then this year the Swiss indoor title. And I've just seen from his World Athletics page that his eligibility to run for Switzerland just started this week. So the full lineup with a Svensson in lane two, Vikrota alongside then Rodriguez, Petto Rossi, Hansen, Polak, and Volko. The final heat of the men's 200. Let's see who the top trio will be. They will automatically progress to the semi finals. <laughs> we'll have to wait a few moments though with that uh, second gun going. I mentioned that the uh, last event I was commentating on in uh, England, we had to have uh, seven guns go until the athletes were called back in their preliminary round. They just didn't hear it. They were too far around the bend. And then they needed some recovery time. For eventually, they ran.
Well, having a look at that, Rodriguez minus 0.298. Now, we did have a similar situation with Jacques Ali Harvey where he reacted before the start. That was the judgment. And it looks like the yellow card is yellow in Chris card. Cohen's hand. Yeah. Disturbing yep. the start, lane four. I think it's really important that we've added the microphone so it's announced to the crowd. I mean, you did sometimes often hear the announcement from the officials of you see the card eventually, but just good to add that bit of information. And also, yellow will flash on the uh, cone marker behind the athlete as well, Daniela Rodriguez. 20.59 at best. So 20.77 and 20.88, the times of those in the hot seat, Samuel Purola and Tazana Mikkel Kamanga Dierbach of Finland and Denmark, respectively. Once again, Svensson, Vikrota, Rodriguez, Petter Rossi, Hansen, Polak and Volko. The man with more races in the legs from these championships than anyone else. Now we do get going. Look at Hansen in the red and black of Denmark from lane six. Volko now pushes on round this bend. Rodriguez, maybe some bit of luck there not to get the full start. Can't quite qualify though as Volko comes through from Petto Rossi. Now we try and compare the times. 20. 49, therefore, the delighted Jan Volko compares very closely to De Salo's 24-6 and 24-8 for Burnett. Shape things up nicely They're going into those semi-finals. Petter Rossi, 20-65. So this could well be close. What about third place? It was tight on the line as they came through. Rodriguez was among those fighting. So, Rodriguez does, in fact, make it 2080. And that means that uh, Purula should go through. Vikrota, 2081. So, he also is in one of those spots. And then Kamanga Dierbach is knocked out by one of his teammates. Not the first time we've saw that. We've seen that at these championships. Sometimes when you take more athletes, they might knock each other out. Uh, interesting that it was a very good run from Jan Volko. He's the Slovak Republic record holder over the longer sprint at 2024. And this was really a return to form, the type of form that he was showing on the longer sprint back in around 2018. Certainly the 200 metres is not his preferred distance. It's a case of running 100 metres and hanging on for Volko, who, as we all know, is a former European indoor champion over 60 metres. But he's in good shape. He ran, he equalled his Slovak Republic 100 metres record in the semis last night and was very close to it in the final. And now he looks as though he's got a lot of good running in his legs as well. Volko... He seems to have been around many, many years, but in fact, he's still only 25 years of age. There's a big thumbs up from Mr. Volko. He makes it himself, makes his way through quite nicely to tonight's semi-finals. He might well need a Slovak record to progress to the final. I wonder if he can dig one out. Rossi and Rodriguez both through. So, Desalu of Italy leading the way with 20.46, the fastest man in this morning's first round of the 200 metres. There's the full lineup, including Vicrotta and Hansen, as Alex was saying, getting through as fastest non automatic qualifiers in that third heat. Perhaps just a surprise that Erewa, the German, didn't make it through. Marcus Lawler as well, not having the best of runs.